I've been doing steroids for 10 years, so I don't have any problems around needles. But I know someone who does though. Babe, can you come here please? What's up? Do you want to be in a YouTube video? Yeah, that would be fun. Okay, great. All you've got to do is put a 25 gauge needle in your leg. What? Are you ready to inject yourself with testosterone or other hormones? Not really, no. But are you looking for a starting point? Yeah. Brilliant, because this is the definitive guide to all you need to know about ejecting yourself with hormones. Yes, I was waiting for this video. Now I can get juiced. Put it this way, it's one tiny sting for an ungodly amount of gains. I got stung by a bee once. It went down the back of my neck. Little bastard. <laughs> Now the biggest fear here is the pain associated with the needle and the phobia of the needles themselves. You gotta be careful of those one inch needles. They're deadly. I wanna make it as easy as I can for you. So here are some tips. Numb the injection site. You can do this by placing some ice on the area for one to two minutes beforehand. Or you can use an over the counter numbing agent. You combine the two, you're not gonna feel anything. When I first did my jab all those years ago, I was hyperventilating. My hands were all shaky. Stay concentrated, stay calm, and take deep breaths. You can stretch the skin at the injection site before you put the needle in. This is gonna help distract your brain that's probably overthinking because it's gonna have a tactile sensation which is gonna divert what's going on and it's gonna maybe make the process easier. Look away at the last second, position the needle, and as you push it in, quickly look away, that can help. Reusing a needle is unsanitary, but also after you put it into your skin for the first time, it's going to become blunt. The next time you use it, it's going to be more painful. So it's always a good idea to have a fresh supply of new needles. You wanna have an easier time with injecting? Like the video, as soon as you do that, the universe is going to align you with the right energy that makes you a wizard with a pin in your hand. Boom. A needle is one part of a syringe. This is a barrel. It's got a tube area that's open at one end and narrows into the hollow tip at the other end. There's lines on it that are gonna help you see the volume of gear within. It's got a plunger and a rod that sits between the barrel and operates like a piston. So you can push and pull it and get your magical formula in and out the barrel. The needle diameter is measured with gauge numbers. These confused me for years because I didn't have me to tell me the answers. The higher the gauge number, the smaller or thinner the hole. The lower the gauge number, the bigger or thicker the hole. The bigger needles are required if you want to inject larger volumes of testosterone or whatever compound into your muscle. If you use a higher gauge needle, it can reduce the pain and the swelling. The gauge number is going to tell you the length of the needle itself. It's important to have everything prepared before you start. Your testosterone or other anabolics, the needles and syringes, alcohol swabs for sterilizing the top of the vial and your injection site, a cotton ball for applying pressure after you've done your injection. Also, you may need a plaster. That's what English people call them, but they're also called band-aids in case you start bleeding afterwards. And also a sharps container to make sure you're disposing of everything safely. If you've got a glass ampule, I recommend you go on Amazon and buy a sterile 10 mil vial. Then crack open the one mil amps and load them into that sterile vial. It's just gonna make things more efficient for you in the future. Clean everything. So wash your hands, then clean the top of your medication vial with one of the alcohol swabs and let it dry completely. Next, you wanna scrub the injection site with a fresh alcohol swab. Let that dry completely as well. And maybe you want your ice or numbing agent ready too. Subcutaneous injections are less painful. You're using a smaller gauge needle. There's no risk of damaging a muscle because you're injecting it into fatty tissue. There's also no risk of accidentally hitting your sciatic nerve. Subcutaneous injections are not that great if you're loading in more than one mil of the gear. Because if you put larger amounts into certain areas, they're gonna run a risk of not being absorbed properly, and this is gonna cause you discomfort. And sites are more susceptible to infection versus intramuscular injection. I'm a rapper. The intramuscular shots 
Now you're talking my language. These are what I prefer. The magical potion can be absorbed much easier and quicker into the bloodstream versus subcutaneous. I find there's actually less irritation when I'm doing my intramuscular shots. If someone has not done their homework properly, there's more chance of hitting a sciatic nerve. So do your homework. Your ultimate goal in all this is to avoid any arteries or veins. So with your intramuscular injections, aim for your upper outer thigh and the upper outer portion of your glute. Also, another target is the deltoids. And for subcutaneous injections, you'll want to inject your stomach or your shoulder. Now with either intramuscular, subcutaneous, you'll want to rotate those injection sites. If you keep going back to the same area, this is gonna cause more trauma in that tissue, increasing the likelihood of you feeling discomfort or pain. So if you're doing intramuscular, put it in your glute on the left hand side and then put it in the right hand side. Then next time, put it in the left delt and then the right delt. Generally quads are going to be a little bit more painful. You could just hit the wrong area and go around with a dead leg for a couple of days. If that happens, nothing to worry about. That's why the best two sites are generally the glute and the shoulder. How do you actually do it? Because you've been talking a lot, but not a lot of injecting has been happening. Well, if you're ready to inject, I'm gonna show you right now. Wash your hands thoroughly. Make sure your vial of magic potion is at room temperature. Don't be storing it in the fridge. Clean the top of the vial with an alcohol swab and then wait so it dries completely. Attach whichever needle you're using to the syringe. It's time to draw back the plunger a little bit and fill the syringe with air. So we want the same amount of air in the syringe as the same amount of gear that you're planning to inject. With your vial on an even surface, insert the needle into the rubber stopper at the top. Push the plunger down and force all the air into the vial. Pick up the vial with the needle inside and turn it upside down. Make sure the tip of the needle is fully covered with the liquid that's in the vial. Steadily pull the plunger out, drawing the medicine into the syringe. Make sure you're not drawing in any air bubbles because this is going to potentially throw off measuring your dosage. Pull back the plunger until it matches the line of your desired dosage. Remember at this point, because testosterone is thicker if it's a long ester, it's going to take a little bit longer if you're using a subcutaneous needle. Once your desired dosage is within the barrel, slightly pull back the plunger further to withdraw any medicine out of the needle head so you're not gonna lose any when you swap the head over. Now it's time to take off the bigger needle and then we put the smaller needle in its place. Hold the syringe up right now and flick that barrel. We need to make sure there's no tiny air bubbles in the top of the syringe. Carefully depress the plunger now to remove all that excess air from the end of the syringe. Clean the skin at your injection site with a fresh alcohol swab. Hold the needle at 90 degrees to your body. When you're ready, insert the needle all the way into the skin. A quick safety procedure now, before you inject, pull back the plunger. Just a little bit, because if you see any blood in the syringe, it's more than likely that you've hit a vein. If that happens, that's fine. I've probably done it a few times in about 10 years, so it's very rare. Just change the needles over and find a different injection site. But if you don't see any blood, you're good to inject. Push that plunger down now and inject the gear, feeling that muscle protein synthesis just go through the roof. Now we're cooking with gas. You've got testosterone or whatever compound in you, things are great. Remove it at the same angle that it was inserted in. Go ahead and place a cotton ball to stem any bleeding from the injection site. That's it, you're done. Congratulations, it was that easy. We wanna dispose of the needle properly, so cap your needle and put it in your sharps bin. You can get a sharps container from most pharmacies, but if you're having problems locating one, you can use an empty laundry detergent bottle, make sure it's empty, and that will do fine. Then, when your sharps bin is filled up, you can return it to the pharmacy, and notice, they're gonna see you walk in, you're gonna be jacked, it'll be massive, hand them over a load of sharps bins, get another bin and you're out the door. So you're walking around massive or shredded and you're not doing any damage to the environment. 
good job. Injection timings are so important. In most cases, E2 sides are cropping up. Your hormones are fluctuating and they're giving you these E2 looking symptoms. So lock in your injection timing to keep those fluctuations as small as possible. Use an alarm if you have to. If you're just watching this video for a bit of a laugh and you've not done the injection with me, you're only going to fear injecting if you've never done it before the first time that you do it. So once you do it the first time, it's going to be easy and it's going to be routine. If you want the option of making your mission to enhance yourself a whole lot safer and a lot less time consuming, apply for coaching. Imagine having the great Dr. James as your coach throughout your cycle. I can't think of anything worse. In any case, if you think you're ready, apply for coaching. The details are in the description box below. By the way, if you've applied for coaching and I've not got back to you, I did have some delivery issues with certain email services. So if that's the case for you, I'm going to put my Instagram in the description box below and you can reach out to me there. Next video coming up is all about steroid myths. A guy said to me yesterday, if I do a 12 week testosterone cycle, will I get erectile dysfunction? No, you won't. This is one of the silly myths. So watch that video. I'll see you in two seconds.